Aaron Troll asks, can you do a video about the uncertainty principle? Since 1911, there's been a conference held every year in Brussels called the Solvay Conference, where they bring in some of the greatest minds in the world to discuss a specific question in science. There's one this year, actually. But there was one conference that stood out above all the rest. It was the fifth conference held in 1927, where this picture was taken. It's been called the smartest photo ever taken because amongst the 29 attendees of this conference were some of the most brilliant human beings who had ever lived, including 17 Nobel Prize winners. Legendary minds that have forever changed the way we see the world. People like Albert Einstein, Niels Bohr, Erwin Schrodinger, and Marie Curie. Who, by the way, was the only woman at the conference and the only person at that conference who had won two Nobel Prizes in two different disciplines of science. Suck on that, dude bros. And also, this guy. But what made this conference so historic wasn't just the average IQ of the people there, it's that science just in the previous years had stumbled into the strange new world of quantum physics. And they did not like what they found. Particles vanishing and appearing out of thin air, uh, seemingly in two different places at once, weird entanglements that defied all logic, every single discovery seemed to fly in the face of thousands of years of scientific understanding. And there was no consensus as to why. In fact, forget consensus, there were all out brawls. So the Solvay Conference was the perfect opportunity to get the greatest minds in the world together to figure out a solution on this, and they generally fell into three different camps. Pilot wave theory, proposed by Louis de Broglie, which says that quantum particles are deterministic and move along paths by a guiding equation. Erwin Schrodinger's wave mechanics theory, and last but not least, the quantum mechanics theory championed by famed physicist Niels Bohr and the young maverick, Werner Heisenberg. Heisenberg was young. He was only 24 when he published his first paper on this, and his uncertainty principle had just been published that same year as the conference, so it was the subject of very heated debate. Because observations of quantum particles showed them acting both as particles and as waves at different times, and according to classical physics, that's impossible. It has to be either one or the other. So the prevailing theories picked aside. Pilot wave theory argued that it was a particle, but then struggled to explain the waviness of it, and the wave mechanics theory Explain the waviness, but had trouble explaining the particleness. And then there was Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, which argued that nope, they were both. SCANDAL! Bohr and Heisenberg were the first to suggest that the particles exist in a probability state until it's measured, at which point the waveform collapses and it behaves as a particle. Specifically, the uncertainty principle says that you can't precisely measure both the momentum and the position of a particle, that the more precisely you measure the momentum, the less precisely you measure the position and vice versa. Now, this is often confused with the observer effect, which states that the measurement of a quantum particle will change its position and momentum. But in this case, measurement actually means any interaction between a classical and quantum object. The existence of an observer is irrelevant. Now this was just too much for some of these older guys to wrap their heads around, but nobody hated the implications of the uncertainty principle more than Albert Einstein. Just a couple decades before this, Albert Einstein became a household name when his theory of relativity was spectacularly proven true, and it changed the face of physics as we know it. Dude was and still is, arguably, the most famous scientist in the world. But he just could not get behind this idea. He argued endlessly at this conference against the uncertainty principle, and every single day he came in with new arguments to bear. And every day he was smacked down by Niels Bohr. At one point they had the famous exchange where Einstein said, God does not play dice with the universe. To which Bohr replied, Einstein, stop telling God what to do. Science burn! Oh no he didn't! While the matter wasn't settled at the end of the conference, eventually Heisenberg and Bohr's interpretation, also known as the Copenhagen interpretation, because that's where they're from, eventually won out. And today, though there are still some detractors, it's still understood as the most accurate description of what's going on at the quantum level. Einstein, sadly, never fully accepted quantum mechanics, and he worked for the rest of his life to find a theory of everything that explained both quantum and relativistic effects until his death in 1955. Another person who struggled with this interpretation was the famed Erwin Schrodinger, who developed the Schrodinger's Cat Thought Experiment. This has been presented in a million different ways, but the basic gist of the Schrodinger's Cat Experiment is that you take a cat, preferably one you don't mind killing, and seal it in a box and rig the box with a vial of poison that's triggered by a piece of radioactive material that has a 50% chance of the atom decaying, which, if it does, will release the poison and kill the cat. After an hour, you open the box and the cat is either dead or alive, but until you open the box, due to the probabilistic nature of decaying atoms, the cat is both alive and dead at the same time. 
This, of course, is absurd, but it's meant to be absurd. It's another example of reductio ad absurdum, which we talked about last week in our Zeno's Paradox video. But it does ask the big question, which is, where does probability end and reality begin? Now, Schrodinger did begrudgingly eventually accept the Copenhagen interpretation, but he hated everything about it. In fact, he once stated, I don't like it, and I'm sorry I ever had anything to do with it. These guys really hated this thing. In more recent years, pilot wave theory has had a little bit of a resurgence thanks to David Bohm in the 50s, and even some experiments just in the last 10 years seem to have shown that it's got a little bit of validity to it. But still, the uncertainty principle has held strong as the most solid explanation for the quantum world, even as it makes us ask fundamental questions about the nature of reality. Thanks as always for watching, and a special thanks to my answer files on Patreon who help support this channel. If, uh, you know, I, I gotta stop, I gotta stop. Can we stop? Stop. I can't, I can't just do this again. You see me say this every week, I thank the Patreon people, I put this little card up over here that shows their names, and you see their names up here because they support at a certain level that gets their names in the credits, but I have to call out one person specifically, and that's Matt Herring. Matt was literally one of the very first people to jump onto Patreon, and he has supported at the very highest level, and he has supported at the very highest level this entire time. Dude is a student and was even like between jobs when he first started supporting and to the point that I was kind of like, dude, are you sure you want to do this? But it's not just that he's contributed money over the years. He's also contributed in the comments on Facebook and all the social media places. He's given great ideas for video topics. He's contributed thoughts and, and added to discussions and the comments and everything. And the dude is just an overall awesome dude. There needs to be more people out there like them. And I really want to take a minute to call out Matt and thank him for being so awesome. So I am adding Matt, long overdue, to the answer file cubby. When Matt joined me on some of my Patreon live chats, uh, I noticed that he had some headphones on. They had these really cool lights around him, and I called him, I, I, I said that they were like Tron headphones. So this might be kind of silly, but Matt, I got, I got a Tron light cycle here for you. This is your icon that I'm putting up, and it's going right here on the shelf, front and center. Congratulations, man. You earned it. I want to say all of you congratulate Matt down in the comments. He's a great guy. He deserves it. But I'm going to close this out now. You guys go out and have an eye-opening week, and I'll see you next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.